Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. So what do you think is the funkiest slap riff of all time? Well, there's a lot to choose from. I'm guessing a lot of you are going to go with something by Flea. Some of you are going to go with something a bit more poppy or jazzy with Mark King, Lewis Johnson or Marcus Miller. Then there's the Claypool fans out there and the Victor Wooten fans. Well, I'm not going to go with any of those guys. No, I'm going back to the source of slap, the original funketeer and slapmaster Larry Graham. And that can mean only one thing, that's right, Hair by Graham Central Station. Okay, so be sure to let me know in the comments what your number one funky slap riff is. And if I've not covered it yet, I'll try to make a lesson on your choice soon. In today's lesson, I'm going to give a little breakdown of the opening riff and give you some tips on how to get to grips not only with the techniques in there, but also the timing, which is generally seen as the hardest part about it. The cool rhythm of this line is also the thing that makes it so funky. So be sure to check out the tab and drum track over at Talking Bass by following the link in the info below or the card up there. Okay, so first let's go over the basic notes in here. Now this tune is in E minor, so we've got a lot of this open E in there, you know that good old open E that you get on a lot of slap riffs, and we start up at this E at the 7th fret of the E string. Now when you play this, you can either hammer on into it or you can slide into it, but either way we've got this little gro uh, gr gross note, grace note into there. Okay, so you can hammer on or slide in. Either way, we're leading into the E at the seventh fret of the E string. Then we hit the open E string. So, okay, so obviously both slapped. Then we've got the open E again, and then we've got these two octaves, G and A. So, third fret E string, fifth fret D string. Then fifth fret E string, seventh fret on the D string. So. So open E, G octave, A octave. So, so that's the first part. For the next part, we've got this cool little ascent that always alternates with that open E. So we have, okay, so open E string, and then D and E. So fifth fret and seventh fret of the E string. And we're playing an, an open E in between each one of them. So open E, D, open E, E, so. Okay. Then we've got this little slide, this little funky little slide up into this G sharp here at the sixth fret of the D string. So you just wanna slide into that and that's popped, okay? Okay, then we do the same thing, but sliding up into this D here at the seventh fret of the G string. So, so. Okay, so again, open E in between each of them. Open E, D, open E, E, open E, slide, open E, slide. Okay, so. Now, when you perform those slides, you can use pretty much any of the fingers on this uh, on this left hand. There, I was using the fourth finger, but you know, could just as easily use the second finger. I probably wouldn't use the third finger; it just feels a little bit weak there, uh, trying to slide. But you know, first finger will do as well. <laughs> you know, first, second, or fourth finger, whichever one feels the uh, the easiest for you. So that's the end of that first bar. But because of the timing of this, we don't return to that opening. You know. E down to the E. What actually happens is that slide up into the D at the top, that D there becomes our first beat. Now I'll talk about this a little bit later when I talk about the timing, but all you need to know for now in getting the notes down is that we just drop back down again, back down to our octaves there. Okay, so. Now the next little line sounds like this. Okay, so once again, we've got the D and the E there, fifth fret and seventh fret of the A string, and we're playing the open E string between them. But once we get to the E, we don't return back to the open E. Instead, we jump up to the octave there, uh, the E at the ninth fret of the G string. 
and we pop that. Then we pull off to the D at the uh, seventh fret of the G string. Then we hit the open E string again. Now, I know some people often play it as the B there, but if you listen to the original, you can actually hear that open E there. Okay, so. Then we have a pop again of the D, seventh fret of the G string, and a hammer on back to the E of the ninth fret. So, when you play that open E in between them, you have the choice of either holding it, or you can choke it off. Oops. Okay, so you can use the thumb there to actually cut it off and use a little bit of the hand here. But either way, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna be going at such speed that it doesn't really hold for that long. And sometimes you might even hit it as, an, as, a, uh, as a ghost note. You know, either way, you know, whatever works for you. But uh, that's the line. So let's have a listen to what we have so far, those first two bars. We have... Now again, because of the timing, this hammer on up there becomes our first beat. So, so we come back down to the octaves again. And then we just have a repeat of the first bar. So we've got the, those little slides in there again. Now for the final bar at the start, we've got our little slide up there and then the open E and then our octaves again. And then we come up again through the D and the E. But this time we do play the open E between all of them and after the E, so. Then we have, we have this little, this little bendy bit. So we've got E there, ninth fret of the G string. Then I play just a, a ghost note there. Then we play the E again and then we have this G up at the 12th fret of uh, the G string. And, and you can just put this little kind of bend in there. Now, I see some people play it as a little, uh, you know, like shake, but if you actually watch him live um, on a few of the old recordings of this, you can see him actually putting that little bend in there. So, so just, you know, just a little, little quick bend on there. Okay, and then we're back down to our open E, so. And we're back down to the octaves again. And that's the riff. So, all together we have. That's the riff, so now let's check out the reason the riff can be so odd to play when you first learn it. Well, there's two reasons. One is the feel is very much half the time or tempo that you expect. When the riff first comes in, you can be conned into thinking that the tempo is you know, this speed, when in fact, the tempo is more Okay, so the difference there being ding ding bum bum bing bum bum and then ding 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 ding. It's just a completely different feel. But when the riff comes in, there's no drums in there. So you are conned into thinking, you know, it's this tempo, then the drums come in and it's this half-time feel. So that can throw you off at the start. The second reason is that beat one is very much disguised in this riff. Now there's still an accent in the overall feel, but it's the placement of our open E in there that throws us off. Many slap bass riffs will land on that open E, you know, on beat one. It's, it's almost a cliche. You know, but in here we hit the open E on the second 16th note. We have a high E and then the low E. So that in itself is a little different. And then when we come back round to these cheeky little pops in here, that can almost seem like a fill or an embellishment. But when we hit that second, that second slide up there onto that D, that becomes our beat one. 
okay? And again, down onto the open E on the second 16th note. So completely different from the opening, and that again can throw you off. You know, with a lot of riffs, you wait for the return to the beginning of the riff, you know, a repeat. But in this riff, we don't have that. So this now becomes the opening of the riff. So for each new cycle of this riff, we get the same kind of effect. Each line finishes with those two 16th notes on beat one. So just counting and vocalizing it, we have Okay, so that being beat one, we have those two 16th notes on there. So, you know, there's beat one. There, that becomes a, okay. Again, there, that's our new beat one. And we don't even, we don't even come down for an open E there. It just moves across and we just come straight back in on the octaves. There, that move from the E up to the G, that's our beat one again. You know, it's easy to think of it as the end of the line before, but it's actually the start of the new bar. So once you have those notes under your fingers and you've got your head around this timing thing, you can start to build up speed. So let's start just really, really slow there. So. Okay, so once you've played the, you can just come back round, you know, to the start of the riff. Okay, so once you've finally got that riff down and you've got it up to speed, you can try playing along with the drum track over at Talking Bass. So that's Hair by Larry Graham. Be sure to let me know your favorite funky slap riff in the comments and subscribe to the channel for lessons every week. Also visit Talking Bass and check out the lesson map for hundreds of free bass lessons on every topic imaginable, all organized and systemized for ease of navigation, unlike the unorganized mess on YouTube. Okay, I'll see you next week.